All right, Leanna. But I'm really hungry, so please don't take too long. Daisy is also getting impatient, and she says she wants to eat soon, too. Hey, you know, I keep telling you this, but we're both working full time. Maybe you could make dinner sometimes, Jim? It'd be nice if you could share some of the household chores with me. Hmm. But your cooking is much better than mine. You always make such delicious dishes for us. Your cooking is good, too. You don't have to be a master chef to make something simple and tasty. Can't you at least make dinner when I'm going to be back late? We can take turns if you want. Oh, I get it. You're taking it out on me because you've had a bad day at work, huh? You're feeling stressed and frustrated, so you're picking on me. No, that's not it. I'm not picking on you. I'm just asking you to help me out a little. You say that, but I can tell. You only say these things when you're busy at work. When you have a lot of work to do, you get cranky and complain about everything. If you know I'm busy with work, then that's even more reason for you to cook. Whose fault do you think it is that I've had to work overtime for the last few days? Huh? Are you saying it's my fault? How is it my fault? It's because I'll be behind on this project from staying with your parents. Three whole days, Jim. Three days that I could have used to finish my work. But they keep pestering me to go see them. They want to talk about moving closer to us too, so don't make me the villain here. They're just lonely and they miss us. I told you that I'm against that, didn't I? Who was the one who asked them if we could stay a few days so we could talk about that? It was you, Jim. You were the one who invited them to stay with us. It was me. But we're married, so my parents are your family too. You could treat them better, couldn't you? I would if they treated me well back. You know that I'm not fond of your dad. He was always rude and intrusive to me. Don't you remember what happened when Daisy was a baby? Oh, when dad saw you breastfeeding her? That was so long ago. You're holding such a grudge over it when he just saw you by accident. He didn't mean to do anything wrong. He was a stranger to me not that long before, and I only just had Daisy. She was so small and fragile back then. I think anyone would feel disgusted to be peeped on by their father-in-law in that situation. It was humiliating and violating. I won't ever forget it. You just felt that way because we'd only just got married. It's been ten years since then. You should have gotten over it by now. He didn't mean to do it, so you should forgive him. How could I forgive him? I don't even want to go to their house anymore. I hate being there with him. But if we don't visit them, they'll just come over to ours more often. They'll keep calling and nagging us until we agree to see them. And it's your job to stop that, Jim. You need to set some boundaries with them and tell them no sometimes. Didn't I tell you there'd be no second chances? If your dad does anything like that again, I will leave their house immediately and never come back. I know, but I couldn't stop them this time. My parents want to spend some time with Daisy. They love her so much, and they want to bond with her more. I know they're good to Daisy because they adore her, but I don't want to live on the same street as them. That would be too much for me to handle. They might call me cold or ungrateful, but I just can't do it. You promised me this before we got married, remember? You said we'd live far away from them and have our own space. But I do think we'll be able to focus on work more if my parents live very close to us. We can get them to look after Daisy when we're busy, right? They can help around the house, too. They can cook and clean and do the laundry for us. We've been able to cope so far while we both worked. We don't need their help. And really, the housework would be fine if you actually helped me with it, right, Jim? You could do some of the cooking and cleaning and laundry yourself, instead of leaving it all to me. I guess. Fine. I'll try to help more around the house. Just try not to decline so forcefully to my parents when they ask us to move closer. They might get hurt or angry if you're too harsh with them. Then you should help me when we talk to them. You should support me and stand by me. So no agreeing to their plan. Got this? Fine. I get it. I'll stick with you on this.
Leanna, where are you? I've been trying to call you for a while. I heard you and Daisy went for a walk. Hmm, we're exploring the hills out back. Daisy found a squirrel earlier, so she wants to find it again. It's almost dark, so you should get back soon. Mom says she wants a hand with making dinner. She's making your favorite dish, lasagna. <sighs> I know, but I don't want to see your dad. He made me feel so uncomfortable today. After not seeing him for so long, literally the first thing he said to me was, You've put on some curves. That's not a normal thing to say to your daughter-in-law, is it? He didn't mean any harm by that. He's from an older generation, so he doesn't know what's appropriate these days. He was just trying to compliment you on your appearance. Maybe, but it didn't exactly make me feel great. It made me feel like he was judging me or objectifying me. I don't like it when he looks at me like that. Just ignore him. He's harmless. Anyway, don't go near the guest house. There's someone with a very twisted head in there. Twisted head? Isn't it just Nathan? Your brother who came to visit as well? Yeah. I didn't think my brother would be visiting as well. I wish I'd known beforehand so he could have visited another time. Or, better yet, not at all. I've greeted him a few times, but he seems normal to me. I say hi to him this morning, but he responded normally. He said hello back and asked how we were doing. Ugh, don't say hi to him. In fact, you shouldn't speak to him at all. Even if he speaks to you first, ignore him. Pretend he doesn't exist. Okay, but what's so strange about him? I didn't notice anything different about him. He just looks like a normal guy to me. He's kind of creepy, and he's always watching anime. You know those Japanese cartoons with big-eyed characters and weird stories? He's a weeaboo. He's obsessed with Japanese culture and thinks he's Japanese himself. I watch anime sometimes too. Is that a bad thing? But the stuff he watches isn't the normal kind of anime. It's the kind that has a lot of violence and nudity and sexual themes. It's not suitable for children or anyone with a sense of decency. When I was back in high school, he peeped on my girlfriend at the time while she was in the bathroom. He was spying on her through a hole in the wall. Wow. Is that true? He's disgusting, right? He got beaten by dad because of that. Dad was so angry that he almost kicked him out of the house. Anyway, don't go near the guest house anymore. I don't want him to meet Daisy either. He might try something on her or show her something inappropriate. I got it. If you're so insistent, I won't go near the guest house anymore. But why is he staying there anyway? Why isn't he staying in the main house with us? Because he doesn't get along with anyone in the family. He's always arguing with mom and dad about his lifestyle and his choices. He doesn't have a job or a girlfriend or any friends at all. He just stays in his room all day and watches anime or plays video games or reads manga or whatever else he does. Isn't that a little harsh? Maybe he's just going through a rough patch in his life. No, he doesn't need anything from us. He's just a loser who can't grow up and face reality. He's always been like this since we were kids. He never had any ambition or motivation or talent for anything. Maybe he has some hidden talents that you don't know about. No, he doesn't have any talents at all. He's just a waste of space and a burden on our parents. Well, maybe you should try to be more understanding and compassionate towards him. No, I don't want to be anything towards him. I don't want to have anything to do with him at all. He's not my brother. He's just a stranger who happens to share some DNA with me. That's a very cold thing to say, Jim. He's still your brother no matter what. He's still part of your family. No, he's not. He's nothing to me. And he should be nothing to you, too. So stay away from him, and don't talk to him ever again. 
Okay, okay, I won't talk to him anymore. Can we change the subject? Fine. Let's talk about something else. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. I'm going to drink with my local friends after dinner. Really? You're gonna leave Daisy and me alone with your parents and your brother? After you eat, it's just brush your teeth and go to bed, right? You'll be fine without me. We'll speak tomorrow about moving house. But... You should show them your parenting and help them around the house. My parents were against us both working full-time, remember? They're from a generation where it's normal for the women to be stay-at-home moms. Hey, wait a minute. They don't think I do the housework normally? Then you should tell them that I do. Well, I know that, but my parents don't. If you show them that you can take care of the family, they won't use that against us when we decline about the moving close. Ugh, I don't get this at all. Fine, but come home quickly. Well, I'll make an effort. An effort? I came here even though I didn't want to. You need to support me a little more. Fine, fine. I get it. When we have the talk with my parents, I'll be on your side, Leanna. As you should. Oh, will Nathan be joining us for the talk? I doubt it. Our parents moving doesn't concern him. Of course it does. They're his parents too. They're considering moving because they're worried about our living situation. Nathan should be involved too. It's fine. Don't worry about him. I'll at least tell him that we're having this talk. It's fine. I told you already, didn't I? Don't go near the guest house where he is. I won't take Daisy with me. Then it should be fine, right? Talking to him won't do any good. Just don't go near him. Then you should tell him, Jim. I don't want to speak to him. <sighs> then I guess I'll have to talk to him. Well, it's not my fault if something happens. I tried to warn you. It'll be your own fault. No one else's. Hey, why did you leave the house? I'm hungover and I've got a splitting headache. I don't want to deal with this. I'm really not in the mood for this. That's my line, Jim. I called you so many times, but you didn't pick up. I was drinking with my friends. I couldn't help it. I bet you couldn't. You heard what happened yesterday, right? Yeah. Nathan went under Daisy's bed covers in the night. I told you that my brother was a pervert, didn't I? You still went to speak to him after I told you not to. This is your fault. What are you talking about? I'm telling you that this was caused by you speaking to Nathan. It's because you went into the guest house when there was no need. So he took that as an invitation. You can't just do whatever just because my parents aren't going to be living close. What? And you left, even before we had the talk with my parents. My parents say they're so disappointed in you. They said that they want a daughter-in-law who treats them well. I don't know if it's going to work between us like this. <laughs> right. I agree. Let's divorce. I can't do this with you anymore either, Jim. Getting divorced would be the best thing for both of us. Uh, no. I only said that half seriously. I didn't mean that I wanted to divorce you. I'm saying it completely seriously. Anyway, what? Nathan went under Daisy's bed covers? Is that what your parents told you? They did. That's wrong. Your dad was the one who went under Daisy's bed covers. Nathan actually tried to stop him. Your dad's face is swollen, right? Huh? Dad said he got hit when he tried to stop Nathan. I was watching the whole thing right next to them. When Daisy woke up screaming, your dad was right next to her. Daisy says Nathan tried to help her as well. We didn't just both imagine that. Oh, so it wasn't Nathan after all. You said that Nathan is a sick pervert. But not only is he normal, he's kind. He actually gave us a lift away from your parents' house. It's your dad who's sick in the head. Wow. What are you saying? Why is dad sick? He snuck into Daisy's bed and even lied that it was Nathan who did it. 
If that isn't sick, I don't know what is. My dad's her grandfather, so it's okay. <laughs> he just wanted a cuddle with his granddaughter after not seeing her for so long. He probably made it Nathan's fault because you guys noticed and he was just embarrassed. What, are you being serious right now? He snuck into the room where we were sleeping while you were gone. I was even sleeping beside her. Your dad is a filthy pervert. He's a twisted old geezer. What's your problem? Why are you insulting dad? I'm not insulting him, just stating the truth. I shouldn't be asking you why you don't understand. Do you even realize what he did to your own daughter? Stop treating dad as if he's a weirdo. You always twist everything he does to make him look bad. How self-centered are you to be so self-conscious about him seeing you breastfeeding Daisy? I see now. It's like Nathan said. What is? He said that even if I told you, you wouldn't believe me, Jim. You said that in the past. Nathan peeped on your girlfriend in the bathroom. But he denied it, right? Of course, anyone would deny it. They don't want to be treated like a criminal. He told me that was your dad, too. Nathan caught your dad as he was peeping on her. He said that he pinned the blame on Nathan. He was forced to become distant from the family because he found out your dad's secret. But he could just be making all of this up. There's no evidence. There is. There's footage of your dad sneaking into our room. Footage? Nathan went to your parents' house for a purpose. He thought that your dad would try to do something creepy, so he was trying to get some proof. Are you sure that's true? What's the point in me lying about this? Daisy even told me that when she was having a shower, your dad went into the bathroom to speak to her. It's very suspicious behavior. Why would he go to the bathroom and speak to her from behind the shower curtains? I can't help but wonder, what would have happened if she was getting changed? Hey, come on now. Stop thinking in that way. You're being dramatic. He's family. I feel sorry for Dad. What, you're gonna take your dad's side even after all of this? I'm not taking sides. I'm just doing what's right. Stop accusing him of doing strange things with his family. This is horrible. You're the one who's horrible, Jim. Daisy says she's creeped out by her granddad, too. I don't need you if you're not going to protect me and Daisy. I should have divorced you sooner if this was going to happen. Just calm down, Leanna. What a joke it would be to divorce over something so small. It's no small thing. Not for me or Daisy. And this isn't just about your dad. I'm getting sick of your behavior too, Jim. My behavior? I've been a good father, haven't I? Aren't you satisfied? You believe your father over me and our daughter? We both work full time, but you feel entitled to me doing all the housework. You show no concern for your daughter. You try to protect your parents over us after all we've been through. I've had enough. Enough of everything. What the hell? I wish I'd listened to my parents. Huh? Women with careers get full of themselves. It's exactly as they said. Just because you could make it on your own even if we divorce you, insult my parents. You won't quit your job, but you won't let my parents close by. You're selfish and always whining. I should have married a more obedient woman. Fine then. So we agree to a divorce? We'll be leaving the house immediately. Leanna, hi. It's been a while. What is it? Didn't I tell you not to text me other than to see Daisy? Uh, actually, I wanted to apologize to you and Daisy. I was wrong. Okay. After we divorced, my parents moved in with me. They couldn't get hold of Nathan, so we were living normally until recently. But Dad got arrested! Oh, what for? You know the Johns next door? Dad was stealing laundry from their little girl. Really? Yeah, really. And when they searched his room, he had items of clothing from other women and girls, too. Right, so now you believe us? I'm sorry. I was so stupid. It seems like Mom knew from before about Dad's sick habit, but she ignored it. Now she's just holed herself up in her room. 
Please help me. I can't look after the two of us alone. And? I'm not your wife anymore. I'm begging you. The house is a mess, and the neighbors are looking at us coldly. I feel myself getting depressed as well. I'm sure it's tough for you, but this is what you wanted. You chose your parents over us. But I didn't think Dad was actually guilty. I understand wanting to believe your own father, but I told you so many times, didn't I? This could have gone differently if you'd listened to us back then. Leanna, let's fix this. I'll really make an effort. I'll protect you and Daisy from now on. I'll contribute to the housework, too. I won't burden you with everything. I'll work hard. Jim. Let's sell this house and buy a bigger property to build the house on. We can't live here anymore. It'll work out as long as we're both working full time. We'll build a guest house for my parents. <laughs> what? So your parents will live with us too? It's fine as long as we have separate living spaces, right? We'll just look after them sometimes. You don't get it at all. I'm tired of this. Divorcing you was the right decision after all. But they're family. We should take care of them, right? You're still saying that. What if your dad tries to do something to us again? I'll protect you both if that happens. It'll be too late after the fact. Anyway, what makes you think you could protect us next time when you couldn't before? I'm not living with your parents or you. Daisy and I will live with just the two of us. Leanna, didn't you love me? If there wasn't this problem with my parents, our marriage would have continued. I thought about that, but I think this would have happened between us eventually. I thought I should move on after considering that. But why? Why does this have to happen? Because I have no choice. You didn't stop your dad from peeping on my breastfeeding. You laughed as if it was normal when he snuck into Daisy's bed covers. You said it was normal because he's family, that we were being overly sensitive. I can't deal with your way of thinking. I just want you to support me. Please, help me. You asked for help when you didn't help us. How convenient. Of course I wouldn't live with those people. But I can't even move house like this. The house is a total mess. You said you'd contribute to the housework earlier, but maybe you should do that now. So stop relying on others. If you can't do it now, that wouldn't magically change if you moved in with us. No. I'll make an effort. Please come back because I'll help out. I'm begging you. I don't want to live with a criminal. Stop trying to drag me and Daisy into this. You said you wanted to marry a more obedient woman, didn't you? I'll never forget that. I will never choose to be with your family again. Ever since we divorced, Jim kept trying to contact me. He seemed to be having a hard time coping with the situation. He even showed up in front of my workplace once, hoping to talk to me. I was scared and annoyed by his behavior, so I reported him to the police. They issued a restraining order against Jim, and he finally stopped bothering me. I guess he realized that he had no chance of getting me back. I heard that his dad got into trouble again for stealing laundry from other women and girls. He was arrested for the second time, and Jim had to deal with his dad's legal issues and pay compensation to the victims. I felt sorry for him, but I also felt relieved that I didn't have to live with such a creepy person. Jim chose his parents over us, so I hope he takes good care of them. As for me and Daisy, we moved away and started a new life. We met a wonderful man named Nate, who loves us and treats us well. Daisy also became close to Nathan, Jim's brother who saved her from their dad's clutches. She sometimes borrows my phone to text him about anime, which they both enjoy watching. I don't really understand their conversations, but I'm glad they have fun talking to each other. Nathan is such a great uncle to Daisy, and I appreciate his kindness. I'll make sure that Daisy is happy and safe with me and Nate.